I've come to the point now in this section that our application does pretty much what I want it to do. It'll allow us to add data to the database. It'll allow us to query the database and then populate a list view. It will allow us to delete all of the records from our database as well as individual records. And we can also update the records within our database. Now, there's really only one thing that I have left that I want to focus in on this particular lesson and that's just to close out of the database. But the lesson's material included loops and I want to talk about loops because that's a programming structure that's a really important concept to understand. If we look here within our DB adapter file we're going to find that we used a loop in order to delete all of the records from our database. So if I scroll down here under the delete all you'll see that we have a loop starting here within an if conditional statement. Here's my if conditional statement and within it we're going to see a do loop. So let me explain the programming logic behind this here. The if statement is going to check to see if the cursor can move to a record. If it does have records still available it'll return back a true boolean indicating to us that there are records for the cursor still to move to the first position. So the first line here will tell us whether or not we have records left. If we have records, we're going to go ahead and go in here and do this statement, delete row, which is going to delete the row that it currently is on. And then it's going to come out here and we're going to delete, this is going to delete one row at a time. Then I'll come down here and say while the cursor can still move to next. So now we've already gone through this one time and this type of loop is going to say if we can move to next again, do it all over again. So we go back up to the do loop, repeat this over and over and over and over again until the condition is no longer met. So when the cursor can no longer move to the next record, it will then end the loop and we'll move down to the next line of code, which is the end of our if statement. So we've been within this if condition running this loop over and over and over again until all of the records are deleted. And then we close the cursor. Now in addition to closing the cursor, when I'm all done with my activity, I want to close the connection to the database. So let's go ahead and do that here within this particular lesson. I'm going to need to create a new method within the main activity to do this. And I want to go ahead and point out that I do already have on the DB adapter a method here to close the database helper. So we're going to go ahead and call this to execute. So let's go ahead and go over to our main activity now. And I'll scroll down here to the bottom and space down that closing curly brace for the class. And let's go ahead and create private void. We'll call this one close db. And what I want to do is call that close method that we saw in the db adapter. So db.close. All right, so this method is going to actually close the connection to the database. I'll just call close db, which will in turn close it from the db adapter. Now I want this to execute whenever my application ends. And if you remember from the life cycle, we can add in other methods than the on create. We can go ahead and add in the on destroy whenever our activities are destroyed. It'll call code to execute. So I'm just going to go ahead and add that one in here. I'll start by doing protected void on destroy and then within this method we're going to go ahead and call super dot on destroy and then after that we're going to call our close db and for one of these methods I'm going to add the at override I'll just go ahead and copy that and paste it down There we go. All right, so that's going to go ahead and close the database connection whenever our activities are ended. 